I would like, if I may, <laughs> take you on a strange journey. <laughs> a journey through the disillusioned nightmares of an immigrant American. <laughs> a young man turned up at this shore, his head a little cap, a happy smile on his face, a dream of the lights of show business, a dream which ended here. in a dark, forgotten corner of a dark, forgotten industry. It's hard to stay up, it's been a long, long day And you've got the Sandman at the door But hang on, leave the TV on And let's do it anyway It's OK, you can always sleep The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, sponsored by Progressive. Visit Progressive.com today. Ladies and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. You're very, very noisy because you feel so sorry for the warm-up comedian. I understand! <laughs> please, please make a lot of noise! Please make a lot of noise! My job depends on this! My job depends on this! He hurts me when you're not here! <laughs> I have kids! Don't hurt him when you're not here. Yes, I do. Sometimes he's naughty and I give him a little love tap. <laughs> it's a great day for America, everybody. Yes, it is. Yeah. On Friday nights, this is my thing. Mm -mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I know, I'm sorry. You can't afford cable, but you want to see something expensive? There it is. There it is. Have a look at some money. Money. Friday, of course, everybody, and a big weekend at the box office. The movie Taken Two opens today, and I'm very excited about it. Look how perky my nipples are. <laughs> I, I love the first one. Liam Neeson has this great line in the movie. He picks up and he's talking to the bad guys. He goes, I have a very unique set of skills. I will find you and I will kill you. I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> it's a good thing that he played a killer trained by the CIA. A movie wouldn't have been good if he'd said something like, I have a unique set of skills. I will find you and I will repair your washing machine. <laughs> Do my favorite line, in, I love that movie. My favorite line in that movie is he's trying to convince uh, his ex-wife's new husband, Stuart, to help him find uh, his daughter. And this Stuart jer jerk isn't helping. So Liam Neeson says, I'm paraphrasing, you know, I'll paraphrase it, but he says, now's not the time for a penis measuring contest, Stuart. <laughs> the, the actual clip, show the actual clip. I was not gonna let my daughter live with someone without knowing everything about them. Yeah, well, I have a few resources of my own. Now's not the time for measuring, Stuart. Now, this, to me, raises a very important question. Is there ever an appropriate time? 
Is there a time when you go, actually, now would be a good time <laughs> for a penis measuring competence? <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, is there ever a good time? Any time's a yeah, good yeah, time right. for me. Now, Liam Neeson, of course, is one of the best voices in Hollywood. He, he, he's got to be the only man alive who could pull off a cheesy line like, Release the Kraken! Like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, I, yeah. It wouldn't sound the same if it was Bill Clinton, you know. Release the Kraken. <laughs> Actually, that sounds pretty good. All right, uh, Sean Connery. Release the Kraken. Yes, not bad. Michael Caine, release the Kraken. You get any? Yeah, Morgan Freeman. OK. Release the Kraken. No. <laughs> Regis. Uh, you know, I gotta tell you, it's time to release the Kraken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Now, Liam Neeson, of course, uh, he, he does all his own stunts in the Taken movies. He's fantastic. It's not surprising when you learn he was a, a boxer when he was uh, younger. He's a successful boxer. He's like, release the Kraken. <laughs> Neeson credits his skill as a bare-knuckled brawler to something he calls being Irish. <laughs> oh, that's where I lose it! Irish people like to fight? Yes, they do! I have been beaten up by Irish people! <laughs> the last Taken movie, the bad guys kidnapped his daughter, and in this new movie, what they do is they kidnap his ex-wife. <laughs> I'm not sure that's really upping the ante, you know? <laughs> like, if most guys would hear their ex-wife had been kidnapped, they'd be like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh-oh. <laughs> First his daughter, now his ex-wife. How far down the family tree are these monsters willing to go? <laughs> By the fifth movie, they'll be kidnapping his second cousin. We've got your second cousin, Ernie. <laughs> Who's Ernie? Is that on me mother's side? <laughs> I will find you and I will ask you who Ernie is. <laughs> now, the bad guy in Taken 2, I'm very excited about, very scary. Do we have a picture of him? That's the actual bad guy in uh, Taken 2. So, Liam Neeson is clearly up against the Dos Equis guy. Do we see her? <laughs> yeah. I don't get my ass kicked off. Him. But when I do, it's by Liam Neeson. Stay evil, my friends. <laughs> Personally, I hope they keep uh, making these Taken movies. I'll pay to see Taken 3, Taken 4, Taken 5, the musical. <laughs> They've taken my adorable Pomeranians. <laughs> Interpol says it's probably Albanian. <laughs> now, see? People enjoy that kind of thing. I read that Arnold Schwarzenegger was originally going to star in Taken, but he kept screwing up the lines. You know, when the bad guy says, we've got your kid, and Arnold would be like, the one from my wife or the one from the me? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, ooh, me! Ooh, me! I was the one that was being the governor of California and banging the help. Ooh, me! <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. That was, that was uncouth. <laughs> Domestic staff. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm glad they went with a real actor like Liam Neeson. I like he's even his serious movies, like the one where he plays that man who discovers a mountain where that woman can't speak English and he introduces her to modern society. Yeah, what, what the hell was that movie called? Uh, <laughs> the John McCain story. No. That's what I... <laughs> <laughs> You like uh, Listen, you do a good uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Maria, release the Kraken. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say. <laughs> that was Arnold's problem. He was releasing the Kraken a little too often. Yeah, exactly. Like, Maria would go to work and he'd be like... Release the Kraken. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Is there anyone else we can do to release the Kraken? I think I'm done. Oh, uh, Matthew McConaughey. OK, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, let's release that Kraken. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, Larry King. I'll do Larry King. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Right. Yeah. Release the cracker. <laughs> oh, oh, Wilford Brimley. Oh, Wilford Brimley. All right. Release the crack and diabetes. <laughs> I th oh, uh, one more, and then we'll definitely go to a commercial break. One more, all right? Do Robert De Niro release the Kraken? Um, release the Kraken. Thank you. <laughs> do the thing, Jeff. 
I'm Liam Neeson, and you're watching The Late Late Show. I will find you, and I will measure your privates. <laughs> everybody welcome back to the show where tonight we're celebrating the work of Liam Neeson and everyone else who might or might at some point say release the Kraken <laughs> I really like when you do it like that you like that I, this yeah. is how I would do it right if I was to release my Kraken yeah, yeah. I'd be like this <laughs> release the Kraken <laughs> it really works does it really yeah I'm waiting for you to release it <laughs> It, it, it's out. Oh, oh yeah, no, it, my Kraken's out. It's running around. <laughs> what time is it, Jeffrey Pearson? Here's the deal. This is uh, Robert Downey Jr., and it's time for tweets and emails and release your Kraken. All right, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the thing. The damn cover and don't look back. Here comes an email and Twitter attack. Giant pretty monsters crushing our city. It's a jumbo lizard wrecking the mid. This is uh, from Cammy in Chicago. You ever been to Chicago? Oh, you like Chicago. it there? Yeah. It's windy in that town, no? Very windy, oh yeah. How windy is it, Jeff? It's so windy that they renamed it Gale. <laughs> Oprah and Gale? Yeah. In Chicago? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Release the Kraken, girl. <laughs> Release the Kraken! <laughs> <laughs> Dear Craig and Jeff, my boyfriend isn't all that enthusiastic about our date to the opera this weekend. Will you tell him it's not going to be that bad? Hey, it's not going to be that bad. <laughs> it's going to be awful. <laughs> nah, it's going to be great. There's going to be a fat lady singing, and then there'll be some a whole bunch of fat people come on, all playing the towns people. You go, what kind of town is this? A diabetes town? <laughs> The, everyone in the, see the opera. It used to be uh, it used to be the opera people were all very fat, but nowadays they're thin. Check your blood sugar and check it often. <laughs> that beat. That beat. This is from Maria in Staten Island, New York. You ever been there? Love it there. Go, where? <laughs> you know where. <laughs> uh, all right. Um... This is from Randall in Temecula, California. You ever been to Temecula? Oh, yeah, you go to a place over there, maybe like to go. Wanda, Temecula's not nice that far away. I mean, you can almost really see it from there. It's yeah, just over there. It's off the 15, I think. What? You it's, take, the, the 15. It's, not, it's not the 15 no, to Temecula. The no, you take the 5. Take oh, the 5. five. Take, take the five. 5 to Temecula. That's a very long way to go to get to Temecula. I think maybe you're going the wrong way, maybe. <laughs> no, you take the 5 to get to Temecula. You don't take the 15. You take the 15 to Vegas. <laughs> Release the Kraken. <laughs> Who's that, Morgan Freeman? It's always better with Morgan Freeman. Yeah, everything's better with Morgan Freeman. <laughs> Randall and Temecula says, uh, Dear Craig, where do you shop for your socks? They're great. They are pretty good, aren't they? Look at these suckers. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. You know where I get my socks? There's a, there's a special store in L.A. called uh, Fairy Time. And... <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, you, you get what I do is I try to get socks that look like they're from a fairy tale. For example, this looks like it might be some kind of golfing evil witch. <laughs> golfing evil witch, you say? Yeah, yeah, golfing evil witch. That hap that's a fairy tale, with that isn't it? Who come into my course <laughs> for a par three? Oh, is yeah. that is that a real story? No, that's right. I remember that story. You're just being supportive. 
This is uh, from Roger in Enfield, New Hampshire. You ever been there? Oh, yeah. Oh, you've got a place oh, in New Hampshire. I, I remember do. that. Yeah. Like, yeah, you have. What do I you do, do when you're there? Well, I go swimming. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. I throw, I throw now, beads. Th th this is from a town called Enfield. Now, here's a, here's a story. There's another, uh, there's North London. There's a, an area in North London called Enfield. And I used to go out with a girl from there. And I parked outside her house one night and stayed over. <laughs> and when I came out, uh, someone had stolen the gas out of my gas tank. What the hell? Yeah, it's, it's, so, you know, be careful. <laughs> There's absolutely no entertainment value to that story whatsoever, was there? None. Whatsoever. Like, you don't know the girl, you don't know the name, and you don't care about my... I can have a gas tank, I... <laughs> I'm just, trying to, I'm just trying to tell you things about me you might not know. <laughs> uh, this is from Jacqueline in Cranston in uh, Rhode Island. That's a tiny little state, Rhode Island. Yeah, tiny very, little place. Right? It's, about size of a, it's about size of that. This is, that's about the actual size oh, yeah. of Rhode Island right there. Oh, yeah. if, Rhode Island, if Rhode Island was, uh, was in show business, that's what it would look like. The hell is going on over there? <laughs> Uh, dear Craig and Jeff, what is the best way to get a car salesman to give you a good deal? You know. <laughs> Release the Kraken. <laughs> Finally, this is from Mitch in Lexington. This is from Mitch in Lexington. Lexington. Lexington in Kentucky. Oh, yeah, I've been Lexington. to Lexington. Gives you, a tip, you ever you know? been to Lexington? Oh, I love Lexington. Really? What do you do when you're there? I like to go swimming and throw bee beads. <laughs> Dear Craig and Jeff, uh, if you guys don't already have plans for the weekend, you're invited to come over for some football and barbecue. What do you say? I'm there, Jeff. Oh, I'd love to, jackass, except I'm plugged into a friggin' wall. <laughs> What Jeff means is, he doesn't like football. Release the Kraken. <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. And the studio audience's enthusiasm when they saw me getting hit in the ass with a bat. <laughs> Luckily, I remembered the safety word. More. <laughs> that got me going a little bit there. My first guest tonight is the chief medical correspondent of CNN. He's a good friend of the show. He's very clever. He's a doctor, so behave yourself. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, everybody. Dr. Sanjay Gupta. Gupta, you look great, man. Thank you, sir. You, love, I love the new digs. Yeah, you, you like it? Yeah, it's all right, yeah. isn't it? It's the it has the uh, operating theater light. <laughs> Perfect. Little love bit. It. Do you you still uh, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, still have lunch, <laughs> and you still operate, right? I do. I they, do. they have big big banks of lights like that. So you, you got to see what you're doing. Right. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Because you can't just kind of phone it in. No, you, you, yeah. right. Hey, and and you've been well? You're, you're healthy? I'm good, yeah. I know, I'm all right. I had the colonoscopy. Remember we talked about it? Right, I had yes, it. Yeah, yeah, yes. no, I did. We share a lot together. Yeah, no, so. the last time you were here, we talked about it a little bit. Right. Right, and uh, I, so I had it because I turned 50. Uh, everything went well? well? It was. I loved it. Did you... Did you uh... <laughs> You got, you got to sleep through the whole thing. Did yeah, they had to put me out because they were doing an endoscope as well. So they did that end. I hope they did that end first, but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that end, and then the, and then. They, the... What, 
they, they did the from the top and the bottom. Yeah, they did both. Yeah, because huh. they got family history of stuff. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so they had to look there, and then they. I don't think they did it at the same time. It wasn't like picture in picture or <laughs> anything like that. Did, did the did the doctor say? I have a unique set of skills. I will find you and do a colonoscopy. <laughs> I think he was saying that while well, I was asleep. What um, what I was, he was doing though, what, when I came out of it, because they uh, they puff air into your uh, colon, right? They, you get really bad gas. Yeah. But yeah. you haven't had anything to eat for 24 hours, so it smells great. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like you. You're trying uh, to say your crack down stink. Well, right? that... uh, what? Yeah, yeah, I mean, come on, you're a doctor, man. <laughs> You're a doctor. How are you doing? What's going on with I'm you? I'm doing great. You know, yeah. we're, we're in town. We're doing the uh, we're doing a uh, triathlon uh, coming up, and uh, we're having uh, nice. Yeah, just trying to stay fit. You know. Uh, you are looking very well. Are you doing it? I mean, are you overdoing it a little bit? A little bit, maybe. No, no. You know, I got to tell you, I, f I feel really good. You know, I, I I've come to the point where I sort of, you know, want to make every moment in life count. Yeah, so, I, I know, hear you on that. Yeah. yeah? You, yeah. Do, you do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I used to, like, when I was younger, I would squirt, like, days would go by, I don't even remember them, but now I'm like, oh, no, I... <laughs> no, it's, it's true, actually, as you get older, you're like, I, this is not forever. It's not forever. Right, right, and, and, and I think once I had kids, e e even more so, you know, I just, yeah. uh, you know, so, you know, things are going really well, staying, staying very busy. What is the secret? This, the, I, if you had to say one thing is the secret to, to the, the, the real kind of health, physical health, what is the one thing that you should do uh, right yeah. away? Well, you know, f f from a from a pragmatic standpoint, I think it's probably to just simply eat less. Right. I think most people just simply eat. Yeah, too I can't much go there. You're gonna have to pick something else. I, right. Right. <laughs> the, but you know, I think you know, it's interesting because I thought about this a lot. I think for me, it, it it's this idea of waking up every morning and having some sense of purpose. Like literally getting out of bed and having some idea of what my what my I can't go with you <laughs> in either of those two. So you're gonna have to pick something else. You're still gonna live forever. No, no. I, I tell you what. I I every, now this. You tell me. You're a doctor. Every time I go and see a doctor for anything, whether it's uh, you know an illness or a checkup or an insurance thing or anything like that, they always say you're under any stress. Any stress? It's like they always go with stress. Is that me, or is that a thing doctors just, like, make up? Uh, no, I, I think it's a good first question. You know, you, and, you know stress is a, is a common denominator for all sorts of different problems. And, you know, it's funny because it's a vague term, so people don't, don't pay a lot of attention to it, but we're probably under a lot more stress than we realize. What about you? You under any stress? You know, it's, it's fine. I, I don't think it, that I am consciously, but, you know, when I sort of sit back every now and then and just sort of, you know, whew, let a deep breath out after something. Well, let big a deep breath out. Let's, let's talk about your childhood. How was that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> therapy with great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do you, are you in therapy? Do you get therapy? No, I, you know, I don't. I, well, really? I, I don't know if that's so, the wise <laughs> I, I uh, no, I'm not against it or anything, but you know, it's uh, it's it's one of these things where I, I, I feel genuinely pretty happy with life. I yeah, feel but like therapy ever... can help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> Le too much happiness. A well, problem. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I actually am a great uh, a great fan of it. It's uh, I find it very yeah, you... very helpful. Yeah, yeah, beca yeah, because you get to you know, I think there's something about having a secretive. I have a very kind of suspicious secretive nature, and I think the more secrets I keep, the the sicker I feel. Really? Yeah, that's why I so, tell everybody all my uh -oh. on TV. <laughs> so it feels cathartic when you when you let I it I think it, there, feel, there seems to be a feeling of freedom about it. Yeah. I don't feel empowered by secrets. I feel encumbered by them. Really? Yeah, yeah, you, I do. Are you feeling better right now? Just yeah, yeah, I feel like I've said that to you. And you're a doctor. You won't tell anyone what right. I'm saying. So it's better. <laughs> oh, they don't care. <laughs> and, you know, do you ever find yourself uh, getting very emotionally attached to any, any particular case are you good at detaching yourself from that no i you know i think i get pretty emotionally attached to every case probably really you know? yeah i'm not I, i'm not big on detachment i think that that's probably over overvalued now you know people say as a doctor you don't become too attached i'll tell you an interesting thing though my and this is totally different i don't mean to liken the two but i'm, I'm a big dog lover you're right and i and i have a 12 year old dog and and i i love pets and my dog developed lung cancer are you and it was it was it was emotionally just devastating. You know, it was he's, he's awesome. doing okay. We actually had to take him to the doctor, and you know he had his lung removed. And then after that operation, he actually developed an, uh, an issue where he developed air around his lung. It was pushing on his lung, and I took him back to the doctor and actually had to decompress his chest myself to let the air out of his out of his chest cavity. And I and it was it was the most incredible thing because you know a dog you know is, he was he was sick he was dying and I did this myself. He's feeling much better now. Right. But it was this incredible incredible thing. I was very 
you know, I'm very attached to my Yeah, to yeah. My dog, you, my I mean, you've never, presumably you've never had to do that to someone you've known, like like someone you no. had a relationship with. Right. I mean, and, not, but you do with the dog. With the dog. And dogs just have this unconditional Absolutely, love, you know, pets yeah. in general. I said, I got a French school dog that doesn't really love anybody. That's, <laughs> uh, but I, I they're a little bit aloof. Yeah, well, kind of a little bit. Yeah, yeah. What kind of a dog? It's a the Weimaraner. He's a big, oh. big dog, about 100 pounds. And, oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Is it, uh, do you find it a little difficult working around fur? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because you got to you got to get some patients in there are pretty pretty fur. Well, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you know, I, I do a lot of head head surgery, right? So right, right. So you yeah. You actually shave the head. Yeah. Right. So it's uh, it's um. Oh yeah. Get, yeah. Yeah. It's tough for them, oh. and but you know we've done this thing now where we don't we don't always shave the hair. We actually will just separate it and make a little bit of a just a little thin strip. And and really? it, it's amazing. We we can do the same operation, not shave the hair, but if someone doesn't have their head shaved. They actually recover much more quickly. They don't. They don't wow, look sick, so they don't feel sick. I wonder if that's, that's like the stress thing we're talking about. Though. Yeah, you know, a yeah, little bit. It, that's fascinating. Yeah. If you don't look sick, you don't feel sick. Right. So you see, they literally get get up out of bed more quickly. They go home more quickly. They just they just feel better. So. Wow. What if uh, like it was a bald guy needed a <laughs> a piece of head surgery? If you put a wig on him and then cut, <laughs> cut through the wig. I'm going to try that. We're yeah, and then he'd be people. like, I doctor. Actually, while the he's Ferguson out, because presumably you're under general to get that thing Correct, so yeah. you could stitch a scalp on him <laughs> that's right say operation was a great success and your hair's that's right i don't yeah. know what happened i feel better right <laughs> that's terrific i uh, will take a commercial break we'll be right back with dr sanjay gupta <laughs> Uh, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, we're back. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, Dr. Sanjay Gupta. We were just talking about. I had shingles earlier uh, in the year, and uh, one of the most were, painful things. It uh, was very. Have you ever had it? I have not, but you know, I had chicken pox as a child. And, right. As you well, know, then you can get it. Right. That, yeah. that virus lives in your body, and it can come back at any time. Do they, do they know why it suddenly came back? I think it was stress. Is that right? I think back it probably stress. was. Yeah. I got it. I got a little strip of it here. And I, had, I never felt in like it in my life. I mean, I've had motorcycle accidents that I could laugh off compared to this. Right, I mean, right. it was like unbelievable. And then, um, did you take a narcotic pain medication? No, I don't do narcotics yes. anymore. Right, I did, right. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's really a thing for me. Like people like me that have had problems with drugs. You know, you go, this is a problem with doctors. Actually, you say, hey, look, uh, you know, because I said to the doctor. Uh, it's going to be, this is really painful. He said, well, I can give you some codeine. I went, I can't take codeine. He said, it won't turn you into a drug addict. I said, I know, I already am a Tootsie Fruits drug addict. <laughs> That's why I can't take the codeine. You know, I, I'm working on this, this documentary, and I have to tell you, it's, I came across a stat that kind of boggled my mind. 80% of the narcotic opioid use anywhere in the world is here in the United States. Holy crackers. 80, we, we use 80% of all the pain medications uh, here in this country. I, well, I think it's a weird thing that people, I've noticed this, it's a kind of a, it's an odd kind of a prejudice, but people think if a drug's legal, then it's going to be somehow less deadly. Absolutely, and they think if a doctor gave them a prescription for it, therefore, you know, look, they know that, you know, taking an Oxycontin and having a beer is not a good idea. Right. But they don't expect it to kill you. Right. And every 19 minutes in this country, someone dies in exactly that way. Accidental prescription drug overdose. Well, the only, the only th I mean, I've taken a lot of drugs. Some of them legal, some of them illegal. And here's, here's what I... again. No, no, I mean, it's not, this is no news. And, and the, the, what I, I mean, look, look at, look at me. You know, so, but what I've noticed, the only thing I noticed about uh, legal drugs or drugs that obtain from doctors, they're just better. They're just, just better quality drugs. You know what you're getting as well. Right, right. I mean, it's not cut with all sorts of breaking bad in there. It's like... <laughs> You know, that stuff's pretty pure, right? Yeah, from what they I, say I don't know. I mean, but no, yeah. it's 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 quite something. You know, you take a, a couple of oxycontin, for example. You know, they can prescribe two every eight hours. If you take an Ambien on top of that, which is a pretty common pill, and you you have a couple of beers or a couple of glasses of wine, what I've just described is a potentially lethal combination. And these aren't people who are drug addicts. These aren't people who yeah. uh, think that they you know want to die or even think that they might die. And all of a sudden, they just they don't they don't wake up. They stop this breathing. is this is you know like this is. A f it's Friday night. You're freaking out a lot of people right Sorry. now. Sorry. <laughs> Listen, we're out of time. You want an apple? I'll keep you healthy. Apple a day. Keeps the doctor away. Here I am. Dr. Sure. Sanjay Gupta, everybody. We'll be right back.
under stress. Maybe a little massage. All right. Help you release the crack. <laughs> My next guest is a very beautiful actress. She's in the show Once Upon a Time, which airs Sundays on uh, ABC. Please welcome the lovely Jennifer Goodwin, everybody. Jennifer Goodwin. Lovely name. I call you Jennifer, Ginny. You can call me Ginny. All right, I'll call That's you Ginny. My friends call me. I'll be your friend. We can be friends. I'll now. be your creepy friend. <laughs> living in a basement with his robot skeleton pal. I like your I like your Jeff with a G. Yeah, Thank Jeff you. with a G. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice uh, mohawk. You're adorable. <laughs> He's right. You are. I particularly like your um, uh, sort of top. Oh, here. thank it's, you. Uh, it's very my nice. My jacket. I'm pretending is a blouse. Yes. It's very interesting. It's Thank leather. You. Yes, it is. And the arms are short. Yes, they are. It's like you got it from some biker midget. I did actually. <laughs> I took them down. You know, do, do you write them? Wow, look so. at wow, look at that. Can yeah. I look at that? <laughs> Very exciting. You're like a real fashion plate. Well, oh, thank you. Do you follow fashion? Are you very kind of Project Runway? -ish? I do. You know what? I don't watch Project Run Runway. Run One Way. Um, runway. But I do read the fashion magazine. You do? Yes, see, I don't know. I don't see. I always say to my wife, I don't know if you should be looking at these things. Because she <laughs> always dangerous. gets. See, she always gets like, oh, I feel so fat. Like, you know, it's oh, no, ridiculous. Part, yeah, no, you can't. You, I think that it does take a certain kind of. You have to have a certain kind of armor on, as it were, when you read those things. You get sort of detachment, like a doctor. Absolutely. in many ways. Yeah, absolutely. You have to be like a doctor to read a fashion magazine. <laughs> you can't magazine. take it personally. No, no, you mustn't. But this looks good. Thank it's very you, nice thank indeed. You. And the show, Once Upon a Time, yeah, you uh, play a cop, right? I do. I play a cop who uh, solves a different crime every week. Is that true? Did after, I get it right? Uh, saving someone in the ER. Uh, and my my dog. I got it right. Me. That's amazing that I got it right. <laughs> you really play a cop? I play, I play Snow White. She does solve some crimes, I guess. Snow White yeah, solves sure. crimes? Yeah, sure. She goes on adventures. She solves mysteries. What, what the hell kind of Snow White is this? <laughs> is it like a modern version of Snow White? Yeah, it's a, it's a, modern, it's a modern Snow White. Do you have a grandma? I, I know, but I am a grandma. What? I am. Okay, are you ready for this? Yeah. Um, I've been, I was in the first season, uh, stuck in a sort of amnesia coma for 28 nice. years. Now my daughter is my age. And Do you my, play your daughter? No, but that'd be fun too. Oh, but yeah, no, the yeah. beautiful, two amazing paychecks, Jennifer Morrison. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I do kind of play two characters, so maybe I should have thought about yeah, that yeah, two yeah. paychecks thing before. Because mm. um, I played the version of Snow White who forgot that she was Snow White. Right. And Snow White. So my daughter's now my age, and my grandson's 11. You... And I'm 28, eternally. <laughs> and you're not a cop. <laughs> <laughs> but I do solve crimes. You do solve crimes? Kind of. I mean, now that we're really, I mean, I've never really thought about it that way, but yeah. No, I think, I think it's, a, it's a great idea. I, I wish I'd been in the pitch meet before. <laughs> she's Snow White, she's her own grandma, she solves crime. <laughs> she's got an 11-year-old kid, do you have a dog? I, I, I have, well, there's horses and donkeys and wolves. Horses and donkeys and wolves, oh my! <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So, and do the wolves uh, turn into uh, men? People. Yes. Yes. Werewolves. Yes. Uh, they were wolves, and then they're not wolves when they're uh, hanging. Yeah, but then they're real wolves on set, which... Real, I, actual live wolves? Scares me to death. Yeah, that's dangerous. That's, it is dangerous. It's like wolves are wild animals. They're, they're wild, and they are big. Yes, mm -hmm. they will eat I'm you. like, why don't we get a dog that looks like a wolf or put a person in a wolf costume? Voila! <laughs> Voila! <laughs> they wanted to you. I like. You really should come on board. I like this. Yeah, I. I what on your show? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to be on your show. Yeah. I would like to play the creepy undertaker. <laughs> we need a creepy undertaker. I'm your man. And you know we have Robert Carlyle. He's from your neck of the woods. He's from Glasgow. So you could like what does Scott, he play? Scottish out together. Um, he's from Stiltskin. He's also a pawnbroker. <laughs> Is he his own grandfather? He, actually, in some ways, yes. <laughs> Man, I thought I was a geek, but I can't keep up. This is crazy. It's from the it's from the writers of Lost. So they oh go. yes, I see where you are now. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, it'll never pay off. Yet, <laughs> oh, oh what? I loved the.
the ending. Oh, you, you did? Genuinely. Did you, Lost what about the Sopranos? Did you, did you like the Sopranos ending? Did you like that? Because that was also. Ooh, la, la. Now that I'm not on HBO anymore, I can say no. That no, they, crazy like, I'm, I'm like, what, what, what? Yeah. Don't stop believing. But, it was, but it's a good song. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> I get very. Do you ever do you remember? You're way too young to remember this. There was a show called uh, St. Elsewhere. Yes. Do you, remember, do you know I about do. that show? Yes. And it ended with uh, it was a kid with a snow globe who had just imagined the whole thing. Oh, I don't like that. That's like when people wake up at the end. And it's yeah, like, it was oh, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not yeah. so into that. Well, I wouldn't say that because you know when your series, I mean, I, uh, they, they might somebody might wake up and it's Dallas. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put it past. No, it. no, it sounds good. It's, uh, it's fantastic. I do like when you mess around with legends and stuff. I what do about too. what about you? Are you a believer in the supernatural? Do you? Uh, I am. Really? Yeah. I knew you were going to say that. How did you know? <laughs> I just don't know. I do. I, I, in fact, I'm, I look for, I've never lived in a haunted house. I always want there to be ghosts in my... <laughs> do you think this place is haunted? Haunted is haunted by the broken dreams of an immigrant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Aw, that just went dark. <laughs> went, a, went a little dark, yeah. Where are you from? Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, I thought I heard that, yeah. Are there Memphians here? No, they're just, oh, you are for real? Hello! Are you uh, hey, hey, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Do you mind? I'm like, do, do you like you corgis mind? or rendezvous? The rendezvous, the best. Ah, there you go. Mm, it's ribs. Oh, ribs. Yeah, you have to like see what, what like side of the tracks everybody's from. I see. Mm -hmm. Where do you like your ribs from? Cows. <laughs> <laughs> you can come home. Yeah, yeah all right then. Uh, uh, we're out of time. Do you want an apple or is that too much like the... Uh, I would love an apple. Oh, really? Absolutely. All right. Uh, <laughs> do, you want, uh, do you want some, uh, some money? Uh, of course I want some money. Well, you, you, right there you are at seven and a half dollars. <laughs> I'll take all I can get. And here's an apple. Well, look, look, let's choose. Oh, okay. It's very important you choose the right Oh my one. gosh. I've been through this before. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> oh, give me the creepy music. Yes, you have. <laughs> well, I'll ask you this. Which one do you think I should have? I think you should have the one that fulfills your heart's <laughs> desire. This one's easier to grab, so I mean, it's just close. That's the correct there. one. <laughs> this one would have transported you to an island where nothing made sense. <laughs> Be right back, everybody. Be right back. What did we learn on the show tonight, Greg? <laughs> Jeff, you'll seem a little cold this evening. Yeah. Could you put some more logs on the fire? Of course I could. Now, this dark, forgotten corner doesn't seem so dark or forgotten, does it, Jeff? No, it doesn't. What if we woke up and this was all a dream? And actually, you weren't a reanimated corpse, and neither was I. <laughs> that would be absurd. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,